Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Millennia Ali. Uh, if it's your first time here, then just welcome. My name is Ali Dr, and I just use this channel as a way to talk about things that I am interested in. So something that does interest me at the moment is true crime, especially um, crime space here in South Africa, because I feel like it's not covered as much, especially on YouTube. So I do have several hobbies, um, one of them is obviously watching and creating true crime videos and um, documentaries. Another one is baking, I love vegan baking. Most recently I've got to, into doing beaded crafts, like making jewellery and things with beads. Um, another one of my hobbies is going to the gym, that's also quite a new one. So I've decided I'm going to try and incorporate a few of my hobbies into each of my videos just to make it a little bit more interesting and also just to make it more unique to myself. So here we are, welcome to the first true crime and crafts video. Okay, so I'm gonna just do my usual disclaimer. Everything that I say in this video is just information that I found off the internet. I've compiled it all into one video for your information purposes. It is information that is freely available to everyone in the public. Also, trigger warning, there is obviously going to be talk of murder in this video as well as some domestic violence although this should be expected because it is a true crime video so there would be themes of this nature in here. So with that being said let's just get into today's video. So the family we're going to be talking about today is the Peterson family. They're a relatively well-known fa South African family in the um, entertainment industry with singing and with music, dancing, that kind of thing. So we're going to start with the dad, his name is Talib Peterson and he has got six children. So their names are Natasha Foster who he had with a um, lady from a previous relationship and then he's got four children from his first marriage to Madiha Anders and they are Jarwa who is his um, oldest daughter with Madiha and then um, Fatima and Aisha and he's got one son Ashur Peterson and then these are obviously all Talib's children with Madiha Anders so this was his first wife and then we have his youngest daughter Zaina Peterson who he had with his second wife Najwa Dirk so Zaina is the baby of the family Okay, so as always, we're going to go through the background of the family so that we can just understand how we got to the point that we got to in today's case. So, Talib Peterson. He was born on the 15th of April 1950 in Athlone in Cape Town. So he was born in an area called District 6. This was a mainly coloured community uh, in Cape Town before um, the apartheid government came and Basically what they had done was bulldozed and destroyed the whole area and made everybody who was living there move because of the Areas Act at the moment, at that at that time, not at this moment, at that time. So this was obviously after um, Talib had been born there. From a young age it was pretty obvious that Talib had a natural talent for entertaining people. Um, his first actual performance was when he was six years old. He performed at the Cape New Year's Carnival it was at that time called the Coon Carnival, where he actually sang for the crowds for the, his first public performance. After this, when he was a teenager, he entered a competition called Mr. Entertainer for one of the local newspapers. So he actually won this competition and his prize was to tour South Africa and Mozambique with the Albert Herbert's African Jazz and Variety Roadshow. After this, he studied classic guitar at the Fitznow, um School of Music in Surrey, that's in England. And in 1974, when Talib was just 24 years old, his theatre career began when he appeared in the South African production of the play called Hair. And then in 1985, Talib and fellow South African musician, singer, producer, etc. David Kramer 
they started a 20 long year career relationship. <clears throat> so the first play that they did together was called District 6 and obviously it was based on Talib's childhood growing up in that community. Um, while they were doing this District 6 musical, he met a lady named Valerie Anders and they started getting closer and talking all the time and basically um, this would be his first wife so Valerie eventually um, retired from the entertainment industry she converted to her future husband's religion which is Islamic and she changed her name to Madikha and they got married and had four children so that was basically their cute little story. Okay, so just to prove how incredibly talented this family really is, I'm just going to give you a quick breakdown of all the incredible things they've all done. So um, the oldest, Talib's oldest daughter, Natasha, she's not in the entertainment industry. She is actually a lawyer. She's an attorney who has her own law firm here in Johannesburg. And then his four children with Madiha is... Um, Jawar is currently, she is a singer, but she's also currently playing the role of Kashifa in the South African so-called Sait Oster. And she's also a qualified social worker. And then Fatima is also a social worker. She suffered from select mutism growing up due to high levels of anxiety. So there were times when she was able to talk and then times when she was unable to talk. And somehow when she um, got into her early 20s, she started singing with her brother Ashur and this mutism kind of started fading away and she's been doing really well. And also she appeared on the Expresso show as a guest where she sang a song and she is also a qualified social worker like her sister. Then Aisha, she's also a singer and an actress She's currently acting on the SABC2 series called Melody. She's playing the role of Nazli. And then Ashur is definitely following in his dad's footsteps. He is a full-on singer. He's got his own albums that he's brought out. He's done a solo, do, um, solo songs. He's done duets with his mom, with his sister, things like that. So he's doing really, really well in the music industry at the moment. And then they have their baby sister, Zainab, but she is kind of just starting to find herself at the moment. So this just is to prove how talented this family genuinely is. Okay, so let's talk a bit about uh, Talib's second wife. So this is Zainab's mom. Her name is Nadra Dirk, and she comes from quite a wealthy family, the Dirk family. And they own a company called Dirk Fruit Shaki, and basically it's an import-export company that works between Namibia and South Africa uh, exporting and importing fruits and vegetables. Their family also owns quite a lot of land, something like 10 million rands worth of land. They own several houses, also worth a few millions and they also have two shopping centers that they own which they obviously lease out for quite a high amount of money. So, and then um, Natra herself has shares in several companies. So they're quite wealthy, this family. I'll just rewind a little bit in the story now. Uh, Talib and Madika got divorced after they were to, married for about a decade. It was due, due to them being very different people and going different directions in life. Um, I don't think there was anything like severely serious going on in their relationship. I think they were just two very different people, which is fine, that happens sometimes. But anyway, after they got divorced, then um, Madika's best friend, Nadra, she kind of started, you know, contacting Talib and checking if he's okay, spending more time together. Obviously, she had feelings for him and they ended up falling in love and got married. And then that's when they had their baby girl, Zainab. So even though Talib and... Um, Nadra did have their own child. Talib's four older children with Madiha would still come and stay with them quite often. Um, I think it was kind of like a shared custody thing, it sounds like to me. So they would just come and stay over with their dad and their stepmom 
and obviously spend time with their little sister. Now let's talk professional. So in his career, Talib and um, David Kramer's business partnership was incredibly successful. They had so, so many musicals and plays that they did that were just unbelievable. And they also won several awards. One of their plays um, called Cats and the Kings actually ended up going to Broadway in New York and to London's West End and it even was nominated for a Tony Award in New York. So that was like incredible. Uh, in 2002 Talib actually created his own like comedy musical um, sitcom. I don't know what you would call it those days. I think it was like a sitcom series. Anyway, um, that was in 2002 and it was called Ali Barber. Like it was based on obviously the play on the word Alibaba but like it was revolving around a barber shop there in Cape Town and like all the comedic things that happened around there and then in 2006 Talib was actually one of the judges on the first season of the Afrikaansa Idols um, he was a judge, judge alongside fellow judges Maini Krivia and Dion Moss so that just shows you how you know well esteemed he was in the music industry that he was actually like a judge on a singing competition so i think we're all caught up and we are up to date with where we are in the case so i'm gonna get into what actually happened now <laughs> on the 13th of april 2006 uh, talib was in bed and his daughter Jawar went in to say goodnight to him. I think she might have been on a night out or something and it was about 11 o'clock at night. So she came to say goodnight to him. She went to her room and about 20-30 minutes later her sister called her and she was like you need to go to um, dad's room. He's calling you and it sounds like something is wrong. Like something doesn't sound right there. So Jawar got up and went to um, her dad and her stepmom's room and she said she kind of listened in at the door. And she could hear her dad screaming, no, Nadra, no. So she like opened the door, but it was basically dark in the room. So her dad told her um, to put on the light, but she needed to stay calm. So she was like, okay. So she put the light on, like she doesn't know what's going on. And she was horrified. I think she was in such shock when she, like, she obviously didn't expect to see this. There was blood everywhere. So um, basically her stepmom, Nadra, was kneeling on the floor next to the bed, covered in blood, with a knife in her hand, trying to stab um, her dad, and Talib was trying to defend himself from his wife, and it's like, she, um, Jawa said she couldn't see where the blood was coming from at that point, but it was coming from his neck. He had been stabbed in his neck by his wife. And so um, they phoned the ambulance, they phoned the grandparents, her, um, Jawa phoned her paternal grandparents, her dad's parents, to come and just help, like get anyone to come and help. I suppose she, she probably didn't know what to exactly do herself. And um, Talib apparently asked their housekeeper to take the knife and wash it clean completely. And then he put on a black shirt or jersey or something over his blood covered shirt so that no one could see it. They rushed him to hospital and he basically told his entire family that he didn't want the police involved he refused to lay a charge he didn't want law enforcement involved at all he didn't want the whole story to get out he wanted everyone to keep it private within the family for some reason i guess also you know being a celebrity gossip just it spreads so easily like you know you do also don't, you probably don't want things like that getting out unnecessarily but the thing is after this understandably Talib's four older children from his previous marriage were terrified of their stepmom now and didn't want to come and stay over there anymore. And Talib also moved out of the main bedroom after this incident. Um, he said that he was also scared of his wife. And um, he even said that he didn't want to pray with her anymore because um, in his faith, the woman has to sit behind the man during prayers. And he was genuinely terrified that she was going to try and stab him again if he turned his back on it. I'm laughing, I'm sorry. It's just like, it's so intense. Like, imagine you can't even, like, turn your back ever on your wife in your own home because at any moment she could just literally try and stab you to death or something. That is just, like, insanely hectic. But anyway. So, um, Talib's dad, Muhammad Landin Peterson, actually said that he really liked 
Najwa in the beginning she was you know very polite and courteous and treated them all with respect to when she would speak to the family and things like that but obviously after this incident he lost all his respect for her and couldn't stand her but unfortunately his son was a grown married man so he couldn't tell him what to do no one could tell obviously tell you what he could or couldn't do so but the dynamics and the whole vibe in the family changed dramatically after this April stabbing incident. It was at this point though that Talib did start talking about, you know, considering divorce and saying that basically he didn't want to be with um, Natra anymore after the incident because now his children couldn't come over anymore. He, well, they could, they didn't want to come over anymore and there was so much tension within the family. The thing was he was concerned about obviously the public and what everybody was going to say and think of him because now obviously this would be his second marriage that has failed and this is what concerned him so i think he was still kind of trying to make it work mostly for the public image which i guess maybe normal people wouldn't understand but i can just like imagine being in the limelight and living in that we all know we all gossip about celebrities we all know what's going on in their lives all the time so it must be really difficult to be them and be trying to live their life and then you just knowing that people are going to talk about you and everything that you do so naturally you're going to try and avoid um gossip where possible and keep things as private as you can um especially if you already have one failed marriage not that you know it matters especially in this day and age like divorce is a thing that's actually quite normal but you know like and especially in their faith obviously he is um islamic so for him it is a big thing for religion divorce is usually quite a taboo topic as most of us know uh, professionally at this time um Dalip and david kramer were busy with their latest play it's called it was called huma and it was actually being released in um london so in the in december of that year they actually had to go to london to prep for the opening of their play on that site so on the 13th of december talib flew back from heathrow airport to cape town so that he could come and spend the festive season with his family obviously i just want to say that this beading thing is not going very well i don't know why but this thing doesn't want to cut everything is just giving me problems today but anyway we are getting there we're, we're getting through it this is what it looks like if anybody's interested <laughs> I'm really trying to make a bracelet, but it really doesn't want to work with me. Anywho, carrying on with the story. So on the 16th of December, um, this is a public holiday in South Africa for those of you who don't know. It's called Day of Reconciliation, which is very ironic considering what happens next in this case. Um, so Talib was in his room watching TV. Some it's sport. Some people say he was watching soccer. Some reports say he was watching cricket. I don't think it really matters, you know. In this case, probably is not very relevant. But in any case, there are conflicting reports about that. So he was in his room watching TV, and suddenly these two men wearing balaclavas on their faces burst into the bedroom and yelled at him to get up, put his hands behind his back because he was being robbed. So um, he got up you know obviously a bit like panicked and everything they tied his hands behind his back and at that point Naja came rushing into his bedroom and she um tried to hold him or hug him or something i think at this point he kind of realized what was like something suspicious was going on because why were these guys grabbing him restraining him attacking him but they weren't doing anything to her so it was kind of like uh what's going on here so apparently he head butted her um away from him and then the one one of the robbers his name's jefferson he kicked talib in the face and he fell backwards and was bleeding from his face obviously and so then um the other one of the other attackers well not one of the other attacker his name is wahid he then um bent down and turned talib over onto his stomach at which point Naja tried again to like i don't know what she was trying to do be comforting or loving or something and she tried to kiss Talib and then um, again he was like just completely ignoring her apparently he was like screaming and freaking out so loud I don't think he could actually anyway like hear what she was saying or was like not really paying attention to her because he was just like freaking out that he has to like obviously fight for his life at this point so um, then Jefferson stayed with Talib 
while Wahid went with Najwa and they went to the main bedroom where um, Najwa and Talib's daughter Zainab was actually fast asleep and Najwa took Wahid to the safe and gave him almost 30,000 Rand in cash and he also took her watch he asked if there was anyone else in the house and she said that yes, her brother Ahmad was in the house with his wife and their baby. They all stayed in one of the bedrooms. So they went through to the bedroom and then Wahid robbed them of their money and took one of their cameras that he found in the room while um, Najwa was comforting her sister-in-law. After this, Wahid and Najwa left the room and Wahid locked them in the, those three in the room. So. Um, Ahmad and his wife and their baby. He um, then went with Najwa back to Talib's room where Jefferson was sitting and uh, he was sitting and trying to um, wipe the blood and the tears and everything off of Talib's face and he was trying to reassure Talib that he's gonna be okay, he's gonna get through this, they just needed you know money and whatever and once everything was over they were gonna let him go and all of that. But uh, this was not going to happen because then Najwa was like telling Wahid, like saying, you have to kill him, you have to shoot him tonight. So Jefferson jumped up and he was like, uh, no, no one told me anything about murder. You said we are robbing the singer and that is what we have done. And then Wahid was like, dude, just go outside and go and keep watch. Like, just go out of the room. Then Wahid um, took a pillow. And he folded it in half and he put the gun in the pillow holding it and he pointed it at um, Talib. And then at this point Talib started saying prayers in um, his Islamic faith. It's called the Kalima. And he was crying obviously and just distraught. And then Nadra leaned over towards Wahid and she put her hand over his and she pulled the trigger and shot her husband execution style to death. After this, Najwa um, went with Wahid back to the main bedroom where he locked her and her daughter Zainab inside and then him and Jefferson fled the scene. After this, the family's housekeeper was woken up I guess with all the chaos and trauma and things that were happening in the house and so families were phoned, authorities were phoned, all of that. So. Um, Talib's brother Ikshan arrived there with his own son and the domestic worker helper whatever she said um, told him to go upstairs so they went to Talib's room and that is where they found him lying <coughs> sorry they found him lying on the floor in a pool of his own blood obviously he was no longer with us his hands and feet were bound they then went to um, the room where they heard a baby crying and it was um, Ahmad and his wife and their baby so they broke the door down um, Ikshan and his son broke the door down to get them out they then went to the main bedroom where um, they also broke that door down and found Najwa and Zainab sitting inside they're holding each other and crying so um, Najwa was like telling the police her whole story and she apparently at some point said something about being hit with the butt of the gun but Ikshan said he couldn't see any bruises on her face and he immediately felt suspicious of her obviously because of the whole events that had happened in April that year but obviously law enforcement also were not aware of what had happened and um, he told his family that he thinks Natra and her family arranged to have Talib murdered like his brother immediately felt that something was suspicious about all of this and he didn't believe anything that Natra was saying so over the next few months after um, Talib's murder, Najwa was playing the perfect widow and grieving victim. She was, you know, at the funeral with all the family, you know, trying to console her daughter, all of that. And this seemed to be working until about six months after the murders when um, someone got a, a guilty conscience. So enter into the scene a new character, Mr. Fahim Hendrix. So uh, Fahim was actually a friend of Najwa's previous husband and um, he owed Najwa money because she had borrowed him money that he had needed, about 10,000 Rand. And after she borrowed, lent him this money, she phoned him up 
once and she was like no you need to come to her house so he came through to her house where they sat at her dining room table and she told him that she needed to have um put a hit on someone you know have someone like sorted out or taken out or whatever and so he was like okay he doesn't personally know anyone like that but he's got a friend staying with him who might have connections like that so basically Fahim had a friend staying with him Abdur and he had been recently released from prison so obviously he was struggling to find employment he didn't have a place to stay all of that so he was staying with Fahim temporarily and um, they discussed this whole request of Najwa and Abdur said that he would be able to find people to do the job and that is literally what he did the story that this Mr. Fahim told the police was basically just unbelievable like I don't think the police would ever even have guessed how far this went and um, he told the police that um, Najwa was unhappy because she her family had so much money and um, all of this properties and everything that she owned and she was aware that Talib wanted to leave her and she didn't want him to divorce her because if he divorced her then that would mean he would be able to get half of all of her assets and everything that she owns which obviously she was not willing to share her millions with him I mean she clearly doesn't love the man if she was stabbing him in the neck a few months before this so and then the other thing is uh, story as all this time now try to check out a life insurance policy on Talib without him knowing and made their daughter Zainab the sole beneficiary for this policy and the amount that was going to be paid out 5.3 million rand so that's probably a good incentive to have your husband killed I would assume there were also some rumors that the Dirk family, including Natra, were allegedly smuggling diamonds between South Africa, Angola and Namibia and they were doing so in the whole import-exporting with their fruits and vegetables. So, obviously she didn't want Talib to lay like, claim to any of her businesses, legal or otherwise. So back to the whole hit story. So Abdur did manage to find two men who were willing to do this hit and um, he obviously started arranging with Fahim and Najwa and in the weeks before um, Talib's murder there were so so many phone calls between Najwa and Fahim phone calls text messages everything obviously trying to finalize and arrange all the plans for this whole staged robbery that was going to happen and on the 9th of the 16th of December um, Salib had been downstairs for most of the night. He was catching up with a family friend, Muhammad, when, um, while Natra was upstairs taking a bath, putting Zainab to bed, all of that. But while she was doing all of this, she was also constantly texting Fahim, telling him what was going on, what was happening in the house, asking him if the guys were ready, all of that. So, I mean, I'm just saying, if you're going to put a hit out on someone, maybe don't like directly contact the people that are involved in the heat with your own cell phone the entire night while you are in the house with your husband who you are about to have murdered like some people are the worst criminals in any event so but that's probably a good thing it's a good thing criminals are stupid because that's how they get caught um eventually at about 11 pm talib went to bed and then that's when natra messaged fahim and told him that talib is now in his bedroom upstairs watching tv so fahim contacted abdur and told him and Abdur in turn contacted Wahid and told Wahid that him and his friend Jefferson could now go through to the house and get the job done. Look at my bracelets. I finished it and it's colorful like my nails. Anyways, so, um, where was I? Sorry. Wahid and Jefferson then drove through to the um, Peterson's home at 101 Krasmir Street in Athlone. And when they got there, they obviously put their balaclavas on their head. Natra had made sure that the outside gates and the... I'm sorry, my dogs are going crazy. Okay, anyways. Um, Natra had made sure that the gates outside and the front door of the home were unlocked. So the men were able to get themselves in. They basically quietly crept upstairs to Talib's bedroom. And then that's when they burst in and everything happened. And then the money that um, Najwa had given Wahid out of the safe was not money that he had robbed her of, 
but it was on the 30,000 rand deposit that she was paying them to murder her husband and then the rest she was going to give them once the life insurance policy paid out and then the rest of the things that Wahid took like um, her brother's money and camera and her watch and things like that it was just to kind of make the whole robbery look more realistic obviously one thing to mention here though is that the other robber Jefferson genuinely did not know about the murder he was really under the impression that they were going there to rob the singer take his money um, and leave and he had no idea he wasn't in on the murder why he'd never even told him about it and this is why he freaked out when um, natural was suddenly like oh you guys need to kill him tonight and he was just like say what you know I don't know no, there's a big difference between stealing someone's money and shooting them in the head execution style, ma'am. Not, not the same thing. So all four of the sub suspects, suspects, um, Najwa, Abdur, Wahid and Jefferson were arrested on the 18th of June 2007 and then they had their conviction hearing on the 2nd of December 2008 where they were all four charged with murder and aggravated robbery. Um, except Jefferson only got robbery and not murder because he wasn't part of the whole plan. And then on the 4th of February 2009, they had their sentencing hearing. And this was um, overruled by Judge Siraj Desai in the Cape Town High Court. Okay, so because Fahim Hendricks had been the first one, the only one who had come forward, he had given a full confession to police, he had handed over his phone records so that they could see all of the communication between him and Natra and between him and Abdur. Um, he was given full immunity, he obviously turned state witness during the trial and he was put into the witness protection obviously during the course of the trial just for his own safety. Um, Abdur, because he was not technically at the scene of the crime, he um, was still charged though because he is the one who orchestrated this. He was the one who hired the hitmen and told them what to do, made the plans with them, all of that. And also, obviously, he had just recently been released from prison. So I guess this was probably going against some sort of parole rule that he had that he was going against. So he received 24 years in prison, but he only served 11 years, after which he was released on parole, and that was in 2018. The thing is, the Peterson family, none of the kids were aware of it, the court law enforcement, no one contacted the Peterson children to tell them that he was having his parole hearing. The way that they found out was by a video that went viral online, showing Abdul walking freely out of the South African Eagle House in Krugerstorf. And then the um, other suspect, Jefferson, he was only given seven years for the robbery because he wasn't part of the murder. And um, this sentence was suspended um, for three years because he was a first time offender and he was the only one who showed remorse in the trial. He actually apologized to the Peterson family for what had happened to their dad. And um, he was actually forgiven by them during the trial. I guess I don't obviously hold him responsible. Robbery is bad, but it's unfortunately quite common in South Africa. But to like murder someone, that's a whole other ball game. So, um, and then also Jefferson did pass, has already passed away. He passed away in 2018 already. That was four years ago now. Yeah, so he passed away four years ago anyway. So then um, the other accomplice that night, Wahid. He was given a 25 year sentence, obviously because he was the one who was at the crime scene. He was the one with the gun. He also got charged with um, possession of an illegal firearm and ammunition. And um, he did apply for parole. His parole hearing was last year. He was denied and he's eligible for parole again next year in 2023. So we'll see how that goes, but hopefully he stays where he should be, which is in prison. And then lastly, Miss Queen of Murder herself, Najwa, she received a 28 year sentence um, and she's eligible for parole this year, November actually. I sincerely hope she does not get parole, but I'm sure seeing as Wahid was denied, Natra will probably get denied as well. So um, she was obviously convicted of 
premeditated murder and robbery with aggravate, aggravated circumstances. So Najra was sent to the Worcester female prison, but then in 2019 she was transferred to Paulsmoor prison. During her sentencing hearing, Judge Desai actually said to her that she was inhumane and the proof of this was the fact that she kept trying to like cuddle or hold or embrace her husband while the people who were attacking him were holding him down and restraining him, the people that she had hired to do so, moments before she murdered her husband execution style by pulling the trigger. I mean like... How psychotic and false can you get that's actually just really really scary like then if you're going to make this whole murder thing then just stay in your room and leave him alone and let the guards do what they're supposed to don't be here trying to cuddle and hold him when he knows very well what you what you've done and that this was you like what a traitor <clears throat> oh just an interesting thing side note here uh henry van breda the ex-murderer he in his trial it was also judge Shiraj Desai that was ruling over his case and he's also in Portsmouth prison at the moment. So Henry and um, Nadra are currently serving their sentences together in the same prison for murdering their loved ones in Cape Town. So that's crazy. Stop murdering your loved ones. You're not going to get away with it. You will end up in Portsmouth prison. Even though Judge Desai is no longer a judge and his tenure ended last year, someone else will send you there. I guarantee you. It just doesn't end well. Okay, so anyway, Talib's burial service was held um, on the 17th of December 2006, so that's the day after he was murdered, at a mosque in St. Athens Way in Athlone. So Zay Zainab, the baby of the family, she continues to visit her mom in prison. Um, I think she has forgiven her mom. Some of Talib's older kids have also said they've forgiven Najwa in the meantime. They've grown with maturity. And they just don't want to hold that hatred in their hearts anymore. They are much better people than I am. I mean, I understand it's a bit complicated because you have your baby sister here and it's your baby sister's mom. But she's also the person who murdered your dad in cold blood. So, I don't know. That's a very, that's very complicated for me. I don't know how I feel about that. Anywho, so Zainab does still visit her mom. She doesn't really like to talk about any of those things publicly. She is 23 years old now. I'm not entirely sure what she's doing career-wise. But it does seem like the family is quite close. She grew up staying in that house, her parents' house in Athlone, um, with her older brother, Suleiman, that's Najwa's oldest son. So she stayed with him and his family in that house. Talib's only son, Ashur, and one of South Africa's fellow musicians, Emo Adams. Don't know if you've heard of this, you know, unknown dude. Anyway, I just want to say I've seen him live in concert before and he's actually really funny. But that's besides the point. Um, Imo and um, Ashur actually planned and organized a tribute concert for Talib 10 years after he was killed in 2016 at the Grand West Casino in Cape Town and some of Talib's other kids also sang at this um, tribute concert as well as David Cromer and a bunch of other South African celebrities so that was actually pretty awesome so, um, so after all of these things happened Madiha actually started um, going back to entertaining and performing again and um, she does still sing and um, do events. Her and her son Ashur actually did a duet. I think they've done a few duets actually. And um, it's really beautiful. So you can catch this whole Peterson family somewhere in the public eye. They are all very, very talented. Clearly that the children all take after their parents. And um, which is awesome. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy for them that they were able to follow in their father's footsteps and, you know, keep his memory alive that way and it's sad for Zainab that she lost her dad and basically her mom and I do understand as I said earlier it's a very difficult situation but I just feel like Najwa deserves to be in prison after what she did like she had everything in the world she had a loving husband she had you know a beautiful baby girl she had a lot of money I don't know what she needed more money for if she already had so much money so it was just greed it was just because she was obviously not a very kind person and the fact that her husband didn't lay charges against her the first time she tried to stab him already like it's so sad because we hear about so many GBV cases where it's the men um, hurting their wives or their you know significant others and eventually murdering them but it's not that often that we hear especially a big case involving celebrities and things 
where it's the woman who's um, physically abusive towards her husband and ends up murdering him then so which is so heartbreaking I'm sure he didn't think that she would actually kill him even though she had stabbed him before I'm sure he didn't think that she was actually going to go through with something like that so that's pretty sad and terrifying um, for the whole family but I'm so I'm glad that they were all able to get through it and are doing so well with their lives and you know and have made such a, a good and amazing thing out of such a tragic event so yeah, that's it for today's story. Please remember to like my video, put a, leave a comment if you want to, share the video, subscribe to my channel, put the little bell thing notification on so that you can know every time I do upload videos. I am going to try in 2022 to be a bit more consistent with my uploading of videos. I really do want to try and do at least once a week, but we will see. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this first video of True Crime and Crafts and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Special person, that's the one that you will call your queen of hearts. And this is the song that tells you about that. I'm a man who gambles money on the cards. Luck has kept me company when times were hard. Life's a gamble, but I'm always game to play. Yet when it comes to love, my friend, luck just turns away. Hey.